Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of puppets today, joined by just Michael. Yes, and we're doing a little bit of a throwback versus not a throwback. I don't know what we should, maybe this is just a beer review. Old uh, school. But we're drinking some old school beer. We're revisiting Cigar City High Lie IPA, and we're trying the new Double High Lie. So the reason why I picked these up is because I was in Zealand. On in Elrol, they have a supermarket with a massive selection of beer, and they have these in these massive stove pipes or whatever they're called. I was like, "Holy hell!" Tall boys, are, yeah, tall boys are. I think maybe that's tall boys. The stove pipe bigger than because there's also something called a stove pipe. Okay, but this is like massive. This is all, almost 600 milliliters of beer. This is like the old school bomber bomber format in a can. Yeah, almost. I love it. Um, so. I saw them and I was like, wow, that's, uh, I haven't seen these around in a while. And the last time I found Highlight, or I found Cigar City Beer, I did that video about Maduro Brown Ale and how the brewery is, you know, not being treated too well by the parent company at the moment. But the reason why I wanted to try Highlight and the double as well is because of Darwin from Darwin's Beer Reviews. He loves Highlight to death. Like he reviews this, I reviewed this beer, re-reviewed recently in maybe it's a year ago or so, where he was like really, really loving it. And he thought it's like one of the best shelf stable IPAs around at all. Mm. Uh, so that's a, a lot of high praise because he's drunk some very crazy beers. He was not a fan of the double version, but I thought it'd be fun to try anyways. Yeah. So sure. we're trying both and they're inspired by the game of Highline. And it says it's a citrus forward IPA with notes of clementine, orange peel and caramel malt creating an IPA that's bold, but also approachable. And here in Denmark, we would call this a triple. Yeah. Because of the ten percent, yeah, ultimate IPA for those who crave a bigger and bolder highlight experience. Perfect ten percent. Like this <laughs> seems like it's marketed for people who just want to get pissed. Like ten percent in a can like this. If you could, you should put some uh, super beer on top. Yeah, just so you can drink part of it. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you're in the states, put it in a paper bag, <laughs> sit out on the curb. Uh, no, but, I mean this uh, from Google. Oh yeah, yeah. In Denmark, uh, the strong lagers that a lot of people just drink to get drunk. They have like a foil top. Oh, yeah, wow. that's what um, I'm trying to say. But the highlight is seven point five percent. The regular one and the hops are Amarillo, Cascade, Centennial, CDC, so Columbus, Tomahawk, Seuss. Same hop, different names. Motueka and Simcoe. So a big blend of hops, and these are packaged in the end of March, so they're reasonable for you know a U.S. import, and so. I, what's that? Three months? Yeah, I can. That's fine. Maybe approaching four. Let's see. But let's start off with Highlight, the regular one. It's been years since I had Highlight, and just because of Darwin's video, I really wanted to revisit it. And now we've got it semi fresh. So you smell it already? It smells good. I mean, it's slightly hazy, actually. Yeah, orange, quite orangey head. Yeah. And this was, I remember, like when these guys were coming out with this beer, it was really popular. They, they did like oak aged versions and all kinds yeah, of stuff. They had, I mean, 15 or 20 different highlights. Yeah, it's crazy. Or as I said before today, Jialai. Jialai. <laughs> but it's highlight. But yeah, I mean, it looks nice. It's orange. It looks like IPAs used to look. Yeah. And then yeah. it's got a beige head as well. It's not white. So let's check out your own one highlight. Just like my head, my head and yours head. <laughs> yeah. Mine's beige, yours white. Yeah, I got a little bit of a sun. Yeah, um, a bit. Uh, you got a little bit more. <laughs> we we're comparing tan lines now. Great, um, but this smells very old school. Very old Classic. school. Classic. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of all the notes they talk about. Yeah, I, exactly. Field, but also get like sweet mango, like almost. I like always, I see the mango notes. Dried like candy mango. But it's, it's not that's it's not like a, an explosion in your face no. as a, a lot of modern you know hoppy beers, but yeah, definitely notes of the caramel as well. It gives it has like a toffee, sticky, almost like marmalade note to it. orange marmalade. Yeah, orange marmalade. I see all the orange marmalade. I should just uh, but to compared say. to smelling beers, not exactly similar. I like I did Lagunitas recently. Their IPA revisit that that was not that great. I, I was very disappointed. It had similar notes. This just feels more intense. And also, um, Hobgoblin, which was a Hobgoblin IPA, which was like an English IPA with American hops. It was also marmalade, but this just feels much more American because it's more hoppy. And then also, you don't have those English esters. Hmm. Maybe even a hint of stone fruit to it. But I'm actually, oh, papaya, sweet papaya. I'm not that good in all those tropical fruits. Fruit. Yeah. Well, it smells good, I think. It smells good. Sugar coated. 
like Oreos. Yeah, yeah, a sweet malty. Let's try it. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Pretty damn crushable. Yeah. Compared nice. to those bitterness. That's actually nice. Compared to, like, this really reminds me of, like, Ama a little bit. Yeah, like, I'm always doing IPAs. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like it's bitter, but it's not like a stringent, the crazy West. No, 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 no. It's it's quite balanced. The crystal, there's almost like something in there that reminds me of rye on the end, like a spice. It has a spiciness and an oakiness. Yeah, almost like woody oakiness. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if that's one of the hops that's providing that. And you can feel it's definitely a lot of kettle hops with dry hopping or something, because it has that resiny hop flavor mm. as well. I like the aftertaste. Mm -hmm. It's so like it's so orangey. Like it's one of the most orangey IPAs I've had. Bitter before. orange, bitter orange, sweet orange, clementine, tangerine, like all the different mm. sweeter orange type flavors. And then aftertaste, a bit of bitter grapefruit, touches of pine. The resin, yeah, yeah, for sure. But there's like a black pepper spice or something to it as well. There's some spiciness, not chili spice, but, but no, 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 no spice. Well, all, all that mango could be from Motueka. Centennial Mango Cascade. also has peppery vibes. Yeah. Amarillo, Cascade, Centennial. I mean, with the hops in there, the flavor compounds. It makes sense. It's like, uh, it, it, it also tastes like a beer with a lot of hops in the kettle, like hot side. Mm -hmm. So you get more of those sticky resiny flavors. But what, it's not too sticky either, like West Coast. It's a bit more clean drinking. Yeah. And like it's, it's really drinkable. It's almost like the... The step before the modern West Coast. Like you had the yeah. West Coast IPAs where it was just scrapingly bitter and whatnot. Then you got a, a little while down the line, then there's all the San Diego IPAs that were more bright and fruity. And then now the whole modern, it's like almost like it's a step just around the San Diego, like just before maybe because it's the San Diego IPAs were a bit more bitter than this, maybe not as crystal malt heavy. It's a bit dry. It's dry as well, yeah. which is nice. But the, so it's it definitely it's you can see how this is different than a lot of IPAs were at the time when this came out. Is this it's called a mid coast? No, they just call this an American IPA. They don't call it West Coast or anything. Oh, okay, that's just they just call it an IPA. Um, but it, it it's also not completely West Coast, I think, because it's well, it's in the vein, but it's just not as bitter. Like know, West Coast is also the reference and more dank. It's also not dank and bright. It it actually I think it follows suit to a lot of also East Coast IPA strains in the past, because they had, in my memory, more crystal malt, they're more balanced on the bitterness. Uh, so they were not like the same bitter, dank, fruity hop bombs as the West Coast was. Uh, and sometimes the old school West Coast was also just insanely bitter, but then it kind of morphed and now we have these just crazy bright tropical fruity mm. beers. Just like it's, you can see the evolution. This is on the path of what IPA is becoming now. Even like hazy, I can, you can totally sense some of the similarities. The fruitiness. That there's fruitiness, overripeness. I'm, I'm really wondering what kind of yeast they use for this. Um, it's not like a hazy IPA crazy juice bomb, but it just it's it's quite fruity. Mm, it is. <laughs> Let's try and move on to the double highlight, 10%. So I have an idea that it might not be as good as this one. Yeah, because that one is actually quite nice. It but, is. But this... I, I couldn't see. imagine that the more alcohol... It's gonna okay. make it better. Yeah, but it's a different hop bill, as yeah. you said. Let's well, uh, give it a smell. Uh, first, it looks the same. It looks almost the same. It's just a shade darker. I, I think it's not. I think that's because we drank some yeah, of the yeah. other one. Yeah, probably. Because so before it looked nice. exactly the same. Yeah. Well, let's take it out. It's less aromatic. I, I think. think so. I actually well, don't think so. Bad. I think it's almost the same. It's very similar. It smells a bit sweeter. It smells more sticky. It smells yeah, yeah, yeah. quite sticky. It smells more orange marmalade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I the do. other one had more like fruitiness. Marmalade is also fruity. You can also get some uh, yank vibes here. Okay, bubblegum. Yeah, okay. I can see a little bit of that. There's some something like that. But like... There's some yeah, minty, it, minty. Yeah, spearmint. I can totally see a minty note. Spearmint. Sweet mint. And then there's like, oh yeah, almost like a little bit toothpastey. Yeah. Something weird like <laughs> that. And it, it's not like now I'm getting all mint, but it's like, <laughs> thank you. But orange, it's not yeah. as like an, an orange bomb, I think, as the other No, 
It's just it's, it's, it's orangey, but yeah. it's more like sweet, sweet caramel. Yeah, sticky I mean, or uh, maybe not orangey, just like generic citrus fruit marmalade or something like that. Like, it has that sweet fruity marmalade thing, but it smells like a whole different beer. Let's try it. Cheers. Let's try this. Ooh, that's a bigger beer. You can feel it's. You can taste the ten yeah. percent for sure. But I don't think it's terrible. Darwin didn't like it. No, at all. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like drink a whole no. can of this and then just a couple of degrees warmer. Yeah, I mean you can Ew. sense that in the long run this will be cloying, but yeah. this is by no means as cloying as a lot of modern triple and quadruple IPAs. I agree because some of them are so freaking sweet. Because this is so sweet, it also seems less bitter. Like the yeah. bitterness is drowned by the sweetness. It's really fun to revisit, like and try these bigger brew, beer, crafty craft brands. Definitely, brews. this is definitely better. Much better. So yeah. much more cohesive, cohesive and tight and yeah. drinkable and yeah. sessionable. Like I would have no problem. Finishing this nope. massive gain on my own. This one, two people is not enough, I think. I, mean, I think we should get three or four. Like, it's really cloying. It feels like a really caramelly kind of triple IPA yeah. with some bitterness and like orange yeah. marmalade hop yeah. flavor. It's not like a mango and like there's many more different nuances of fruit in Highlight. They are kind of drowned by the big bigness of it. This is not good. Mm -hmm. I, I have to agree with Darwin. The more you drink it, the less you like it. Yeah. Like it's just really wow, it's sweet. Sweet and bitter. Sweet and bitter. And like just but just think like back in the day, a lot like this was how I'll be honest with you. This is bitter. really bitter. Yeah. I don't think it's the tongue is coated in bitterness. Maybe it's because I think the reason why it's coated in bitterness is it just doesn't wash away the same way because it's sweeter. Oh, cool. yeah. So because there's more sugar that the that's like sits on your palate, then the bitterness is not washed away as quickly as this. I think that's part of it. Um, yeah, I'm not a massive fan. Nope. Like this was unnecessary. Yeah. But this is something that I would love Royal Unibrew and Carlsberg to drink. Yeah. Because if they want to make IP, uh, uh, yeah, brew, if, because if they want to make IPAs for the masses, this is how you should do it. Yeah. This tastes like an IPA, but it tastes like a good IPA. Yeah. Uh, like, it's not flawed, it's not buttery, they, there's no technical off flavors, and it has some vibrancy to it. And this is like, think of a one month old can of this, like for yeah. weeks, must be really nice. Um, if Anarchist did an IPA, like if they're regular, or if like the Yakima IPA was more akin to something like that, mm. that would be really nice. Yeah, it's I lacking agree. some of those top notes. It lacks this. some some power. Yeah, they definitely do. I mean, this still has some power. It, it, although it, I'm it, sure it, this is not able. It off. feels like they're afraid of going too far and yeah. push customers away. Yeah, but this. But it, I mean, it's also the way I see it. It also. They need to make the beer different so people can taste the difference. Mm. Yeah. They have so many. Right. Why not go all the way with some? Yeah. I think this is a, a very nice it interpretation is. of American IPA. And again, it's like the middle ground of it's not exactly modern. It's not exactly old school. It's part of the evolution. And I think I'm going to go straight 90. It's not like blowing my mind, but I think it's really enjoyable. I would love to have it again. Uh, as for the double, and it's just like, I don't know. I think this is just for the fun of it and to work on the name, you know, sell more, sell it because of the name, you know, I don't even know who would really enjoy this. I think it's just like too sickly, way too sickly. It's not that enjoyable. There's no technical off flavors, but it's just like the balance and the finesse that this has is not oh, there. I so agree. it's like, Maybe an 80 or a 78 for me. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree on this one. I think I'll go 91 on this one. I'm a little higher. I really enjoy this kind of beer and it's not so often you get it today. No, no. I will, I'll appreciate I will, that. Yeah, I, I really enjoy it because it's not that often I get a beer like this. And I think it's very well done. Yeah, so 91 for me. Yeah. But if you guys had a chance to try Highlight in recent times and also Highlight Double IPA, 
from Cigar City. Now, Monster, uh, whatever. Uh, I wonder if this has been turned into a flavor lab. All the people that were laid off and everything, so many people talked about the, uh, all this stuff and they commented on their social media and they ignored everyone. Like they never replied to anything. It was you just don't? like, that was their damage control at Monster. Like, don't reply, don't reply. <laughs> and it's so funny because they would, so we got the brew day full swing and they had pictures of brewers just going, digging out mash and stuff like that. And people would comment about, so what about all the people you laid off? And so no replies. They were just like, they just went on with the marketing. Ugh. That's how it is. Yeah. But hey, we supported them anyway. Yeah. So, but I we, need to, it, we need to follow it. Yeah. But uh, if you guys have them, let me know and let us know. And as always, remember to comment, subscribe, share the Facebook fan page, and Twitter, and Instagram. Give me a thumbs up, enjoy, and ring the bell for future notifications about my videos. We're going to say cheers and highlight. And see you guys in another video. Cheers.